Hi guys, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Apollonia Ponti. I'm your dating relationship and life coach, and I help men not only master their attraction skills when it comes to dating relationship, but also master their best quality life. And in today's video, I have something very special for you because I have a special guest. And also we're going to dive in to really what masculine energy entails when it comes to a healthy masculine side and really a wounded masculine side, which we hear so much about. And I have my dear friend and emotional intelligence coach, Emil. He's here joining me. Hello, Emil. Thanks for having coming to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> me. Um, so I know you are really big on just emotional intelligence and you have your YouTube channel that talks a lot about this also too, but a lot of that conversation goes into different energies of masculine and feminine energy. So I, what I would love to do is for us to just dissect for these guys so they can really understand from a man's opinion, of course, as well, because it's come sometimes a little different when it's coming from a woman. I took totally understand. Um, and really dissect what that is because this is something I feel like you've mastered and you've blossomed into and understanding and you also teach. So it's great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so let's get into what the energies are first, right? So I always think of it like as a yin and a yang, right? The hot and the cold, the feminine, and the masculine, it's always an opposite side of something. So two things can exist. Yeah. Right? And I like to explain it like this is that there is, there's a dark and a light. We always have the opposites as polarities. It's it's what's needed to have a successful relationship with ourselves first and mm -hmm. to have harmony. Mm -hmm. Because if we can't actually accept the dark parts of us, then how are you going to really blossom and, and thrive? Right? Mm. Most of us just want to show the light. They want to show the good parts. right? So the same thing in relationship. It's like if I'm not accepting certain parts of myself, then what am I going to do? I'm going to project that onto my partner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's always a negative and a positive, a high and a low. Mm -hmm. The yin and the yang, exactly. Yang, right? Mm -hmm. There's always an opposite. And I think the basics, when we go back from history, is like basic survival needs also come from masculine and feminine energy. Like it's a, a it's a need as human instinct. So it's just for anybody that's listening for the first time and understanding and questioning what is masculine energy. This is the way that I would like to define it because a lot of men think men only have masculine energy. Women only have feminine energy, which is definitely not the truth because I'm in my masculine right now, actually, for example. Right. Yeah. And uh -huh. so just to explain that in itself, what we're finding, what I'm finding more and more these days is that a lot of women are in their masculine mm -hmm. because men haven't been stepping into their masculine. Oof, right? that's a big one. And what they've done is they've overcompensated. So women are bleeding more. They're thinking more in the logistics. They're also working in a masculine-dominated career. Yeah. So in order for them to survive, they've had to step into their masculine. They can't show their emotions. They can't show their feelings. And because of that, they've also let go of their feminine. Mm. And this is why they're both so, so needed in order to have harmony in the body. Yes. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because that's really important. And I also see it a lot in the men's world as men are stepping more into their feminine and being dismissive of themselves really yeah. Yeah. at times. And that's what we're going to dive into. So I kind of want to just really, we've wrote down some things that we really want to dive into one at a time so we can make this video as quick as possible, but give you so much about this. So let's go into the wounded side first, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to start on the bottom of our list. So um, I think what we've talked about is unsta instability. So a wounded masculine side of a man, um, and even a woman, it doesn't, when we say masculine, I don't want you guys to frame it as just a man or a woman, because I think it's really important to understand too, typically in a heterosexual relationship, there's going to be the man and the woman that is more, one of them will be more masculine than the other. Typically it's more men that are more masculine in the relationship and embrace more of that masculine traits. And the woman really just steps into her feminine naturally. But there are relationships where let's say there's um, non-heterosexual relationships, right? Where two couples of the same sex will be together, but yet one will be more masculine than the others. And there's polarity that can exist as well. And that's not to say when a man and a woman's together, a woman can't be more in her masculine and a man's more in his feminine. The likelihood of that happening, though, is very slim, but it's out there, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is quite common. And we need to step into, like, you both can't be in your masculine, there'll be no attraction. Mm -hmm. You both can't be in your feminine, there'll be no attraction. Yeah. So there needs to be, like, one is in the masculine, one is in the feminine, and then they switch at certain parts in the relationship. Mm. And that could be, you know what, I wake up today, I'm not feeling good, I don't feel, you know, healthy, and I need nurturing, mm. right? And I'm going to be like, 
like to my partner, I'm going to say, "Hey, I need you to do this and take care of this," and she'll take the lead, right? Yeah. So that's what we mean by like moving from feminine to masculine,、mm -hmm. right? So the first, the first behavior that I would look at is.、Um, Instability in your patterns. So a wounded masculine would be very unstable,、um, feeling like he has no ground, no foundation in life. Very unstable is constantly chasing after the quote unquote rat race, right? The instability. Maybe you're always nervous. Maybe there's a lot of friction in your household. Maybe there's a lot of friction in your life. A lot of chaos and things like this. And that instability is constant in your life. Yeah, that would be like second guessing yourself, constantly questioning. Oh, should I do this or should I do this? Not、mm -hmm. knowing what decision to make, and usually that then plays on the confidence of the man, right?、Mm -hmm. Should I go left? Should I go right? Oh, second guessing yourself constantly, and if that starts to occur over and over again, because you might have been smothered、mm -hmm. earlier in your life or constantly had decisions made for you, yeah, you're not going to have that as a strong point in your body. Which leads us into the next one is unsupportive. Yeah, what we're talking about and unsupporting, not being able to support yourself, but also support others. I think is very, very important. So unsupportive would be a trait of a wounded,、um, masculine man that's constantly unsupported. Yeah, and you, when you think of unsupportive, we think about what does it feel like to constantly criticize people, or constantly not be there for someone. Yeah. Right. And remember, everything starts with ourselves.、Mm -hmm. So if I'm not supportive of myself and I'm constantly criticizing myself or beating myself up, then I'm going to mirror that to other people. I'm going to be very unsupportive to my partner. I'm always going to, you know, pick at little things. I'm not going to be very loving in a way, or、yes. kind or nurturing in some way.、Mm -hmm. I love that one.、Mm -hmm. Next is avoidance. So a lot of men do this. I think this is huge in the part of the masculine,、mm -hmm. wounded masculine, because many men do this, and also society teaches men to do this. Let me avoid emotions. Let me avoid this. Let me avoid that. Let me push it down. Let me man up. Let me avoid, avoid, avoid. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is my favorite. This is this is me. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I was the constant avoider. When everything's got uncomfortable, you either fight, flight, fight. Like, Fight, freeze, or、yes. or fawn, and in that moment, I would、uh, avoid. Like, so I would freeze, and I'd be like, I don't know what to do. So I'd just pretend like, wait until this tension goes away, and then you know, like a possum, like a possum gets threatened and it, and it freezes, and then it waits till the the animal goes away and gets bored with it, right?、Mm -hmm. So this is what I would do, and and most men do this as well. When we get stuck and we、mm -hmm. don't know how to handle certain situations, maybe it's confrontation, or maybe our partner is like. We call it nagging, but maybe they've asked a few times, and we don't know how to respond in a, in a way that's、mm -hmm. going to support her needs. We go into that avoidance, like, oh, I don't want to deal with this, or I switch off, right? And it's、yeah. a common one. We switch off, and all of a sudden, she's like, "Where is he? He's checked out."、Mm -hmm. And I did this quite a lot, and I had to really be aware of that pattern and really check myself. Be like, okay, I'm, I'm doing that thing. Mm -hmm. Right, and I would even always talk, even talk to my partner, my ex partner,、mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, I need you to tell me when I'm doing this, so I can stay open to you even when I'm uncomfortable."、Mm -hmm. That's awesome,、yeah. and I think that's a big part of what you teach too is emotional intelligence. Because the next thing is like, then how do I stop that?、Yeah. And that comes through emotional intelligence and self awareness, which we have a whole video about, a whole podcast episode that we filmed about that. So if that's Published by this time, I'll put it on the watch next list. And also, too, there's so much content on YouTube、uh, that Emil produces on his YouTube channel that you can check out if you want to dive deeper in emotional intelligence as well. The next thing I think is、um, criticizing and confrontational, because you just talked about confrontation, right? So, like, I think criticizing and confrontation goes hand in hand a little bit. And you just gave an example about the banana, so maybe you can give an example to the guys about the banana. So I'll give an example. My father, and we talk about criticizing. Why do we criticize? We criticize because we're pointing out that someone else did something wrong, but it's not really supportive. It's not really encouraging, right? And it's always, it's almost like a way that I feel. What when I look at criticizing, I go, why do people criticize? And, and they do it to make themselves feel better. Mm. And they do it because they might be feeling good in themselves. So what am I going to do? I'm going to point and pick at every little thing that you do wrong.、Mm -hmm. And I was giving an example before the apple, where I was like, my dad used to 
you know, my mom would get bananas at the supermarket and he'd be like, why did you get these bananas? Like 20 years later, he's still saying, why did you get these bananas? <laughs> Criticizing that they're Every little thing. things. And I would have a fight about it. And it's little things like that that build up over time. So when you're constantly criticizing and pointing and breaking down a person, eventually it's going to get old. And eventually you're going to be like, why does this person resent me? Why am I, Why do we not connect anymore? Why are we constantly running heads? It's because I'm not supportive. Mm -hmm. I'm not communicating it out in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly putting you down for everything you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the confrontation is like uh, the wounded, on the side of the wounded masculine of what we're talking about is confrontation can seem like someone is always confronting you in this type of thing, like criticizing or like if you are attacking, like everything in your life is a issue and you think also too, and you present it, I should say, as it's someone else's fault besides yours. So this is where you will build a lot of confrontation in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is, I, don't, I used to think confrontation was bad. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I did that is because I thought the confrontation meant that you are aggressive. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the wounded masculine, I think what they're meaning by this part is it's aggressive confrontation. Yeah. We can confront and we don't need to be aggressive. Yep. And, we can, and we can be assertive, which is a healthy masculine. Mm -hmm. But most men um, will confront with, I, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to dominate. Yep. I'm going to make sure that you don't come back at me like that. Yeah. And that's only because it's coming from a, a wounded little boy inside. It's like, don't you dare take my power away or make me feel like that. Exactly. Like, I'm going to win. I'm better than you. Like, when we call each other, other men call each other simps, for example. Mm. Like, that's a huge one in the community. And also to competitiveness, right? Yeah. Is, like, every me men, putting men out there, like, as if I'm better than this guy and this guy's better than me, yeah. right? And I think that's a huge thing in the masculine world where men live. I think it's men in general. They're very, and I think women are very competitive. Don't get me wrong. For sure, we're competitive. But competitive nature, meaning in more of a like you're saying, confrontational, aggressive side. That's mm -hmm. what I've seen. Because with women, we're very competitive naturally in the way we look, our bodies, we want attention. It's more of like a different seductive side of competitiveness. But I think what I've seen in the masculine world, with, just in general with men, um, is the need to be in control of someone else at times because then there is a competition that elates the behavior, that acknowledges the behavior that I'm better and I'm more superior as a man. So let me call this other man a simp. Let me brag about the woman that I sleep with. And let me rate women from a 10, a 9, and an 8 when you can sit here and say that woman is a 10 and I'm like, mm, and maybe I'm a dude and I'm like, I don't think she is. She's kind of like a 7. But why are we rating in the first place, mm. right? So it's like, I see that so, so much in Com here. Yeah, competitiveness, it can be, like, why do we compete? We, we, when we were children, we played games to compete, to have fun. To have fun. But what it's turned into is, it's when I, when I get become number one, right? When I'm competing to become number one, what am I actually really getting when I, when I get number one or when I win? Yeah, yeah, what is the it. meaning? I get attention. Yeah. I get praise. So ultimately, when you're constantly got a man that's constantly in his competitive, he has to win no matter what. He will destroy. He will cheat. He will do anything to win. Mm -hmm. This is when it becomes wounded, but coming from a wound, right? Because what he's doing, he's doing it at any cost. That doesn't show integrity. That doesn't show loyalty. That doesn't show honesty. Yeah. So, you know, com being competitive is good, but not to the point where it literally dysregulates your whole nervous system, you know? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be to the point where it's like, I have to win, otherwise I'm not going to be happy within myself. Yeah. And also, too, like you, in not coming from a place where it's like controlling and unstable, like everything else that we've been talking about, right? Yeah. And, and then the, abusing the power mm -hmm. of your dominance, right? So, like, I think that's a huge one in what we're talking about is like the aggressive side. There's another one. I mean, some things are the gr aggressive. Um, controlling side and abusing any type of power that you might have is you can find in that wounded masculine trait too. I've seen a couple um, that were dating and they would play a game and they were so competitive towards each other that like you were always in, a, you know, in fights. Almost. Really? But it was like oh. such competitive and they act like they're pretending, mm -hmm. but I'm like, yo, this is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> 
And that's where it can be dangerous. Yeah. So it's like, it's really checking into being like, okay, what is it that I want to win? Am I actually having fun here? Mm. And where is this coming from? Yeah. And I think abuse of power stems a lot from like, if, you know, you are someone in a position where you feel like um, you can give advice or give coaching or um, even just support someone in some way, right? A CEO or um, an entrepreneur that also has employees and you abuse your power of taking advantage of people. Um, that's where that trait, I think also too comes into play is the abuse of power and controlling. Um, many times we're like, oh, well, I don't have controlling behavior Apollonia, but yeah, when you dissect to the root it's like, yeah, you do. Because at the end of the day, when, for example, you really have to check in because for example, at the end of the day, let's say that your girlfriend, for example, says, well, I don't want you to get mad, but I really want to go out with my friends. You're like, no, it's okay. Just go out with your friends. Right. And then you remember that in your head. And then two days go by and she's like, Hey, I want to go. I want to go. I want to see you. And you're like, Oh, well, you went out with your friends and da, 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 and I'm, I'm not too sure I want to see you. So one, you're abusing your power, right? Because of her honesty. And also you're trying to control something because of something within you. Right. And so this is where we're talking about like the unstableness too can be found in this wounded masculine. And this is all part of healing. Yeah. Right? I think abuse of power can come down to so many things. Mm-hmm. It's power is good, but we have to understand why we want power in the mm. first place. And I think a lot of us want power because we don't want to feel that we've felt powerless or we felt like we have taken out, someone's taken our power away. So that's why we crave power. Yeah. And I think most of the time when someone is abusing their power is when they don't have a healthy relationship with themselves deep mm-hmm. down. And because of that, they're going to do whatever it takes to control the situation and never look like fool in that space a fool quote unquote but you know because they designed what a fool looks like yep and then let's go okay so this is really good and then let's go into like the healthy masculine side because this is what i love um and this is what i coach on so much and teach men and really like guide men towards um the healthy masculine so there's two things is obviously what we call confidence (laughs) like a lot of us know that but also inner strength Right. So I think these three go hand in hand, confidence, inner strength, and then responsibility. So for me, what as a woman, when I look at a man that's confident and has inner strength, inner strength would be integrity and self-worth and also to responsibility. So he follows through with himself. He has integrity. I can trust him and it also builds trust. So behind confidence Anybody that's confident, it's because they trust themselves and they also trust others too, not with an ulterior motive, with the, not with any expectations, right? They understand and they trust the future to pan out. And then when I think of inner strength, I think of worthiness, right? So there is this person that I noticed on Instagram and he actually does a lot of speeches and he was born without two legs and he has this beautiful wife and they tour around together. They do speeches and all this stuff. And he talks about how it is as a man how he spent a lot of his life being in his own shell. But until he took ownership of who he was without these legs, started bodybuilding, getting tattoos, enhanced his look, doing personal fashion, building his brand, he started to create better meaningful friendships with women and, and, and friendships in general and now is married and you know they're in love um, of what I can see. So I think it's like, it also reminds me that no matter what walk of life we are on, if we're like, you know, there's no excuses for who we are and how we've showed up in the world. It's about how do we own that? Yeah. I think when you think about confidence, a lot of men want it because of what it can get them. And confidence isn't loud. It's not boisterous. It's not in your face. It's not, look at me, look at me. Mm -hmm. I need attention all the time. Confidence can sit back and just listen and be present. And I think that's what so many men are missing. It's like they've got the wrong idea of what real confidence is. And when you understand what real confidence is and it doesn't come from an ego, but it comes from a place of like, I trust myself, I love myself, and I'm okay with not following whatever's going on here. Mm -hmm. That's what confidence is for Mm -hmm. me. Oh, for sure. I can see that. And that's what also, as I think for a really um, elevated, in tune, quality woman, they see that. And they look at that as like, they're not looking for the loudest man in the room, the most cocky man in the room, all of this. But if it's part of your personality, of course, own that part of you. But what we're saying is also too, like, it doesn't come from this energy of like, I have to prove and I have to get people to accept me. Yeah. 
and like me. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we have responsibility, focused, and um, logical. Yeah. So let's talk into responsibility because most men, including myself, I didn't want to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because when we were a kid, if you think about it, whenever something would go wrong at home, you know, you're like brother or sister. I know you were only child, but imagine Mm -hmm. you're at your cousin's house. You come home and your auntie's like, who did this? Who's responsible for this? And you're like, she did it. Because <laughs> as kids, we were told if we were responsible for this, we're going to get a, you know, an ass with it. Mm-hmm. And so we've grown up understanding this and going, I don't want to take responsibility because it, in the past, it's always led me to getting in trouble. And no one likes to get in trouble. But what responsibility is, it, it acts as responsibility equals freedom. Mm-hmm. And when you understand this, and you take responsibility for everything that is happening to you and you say, how is this happening for me? Then this is when you have a choice to change it. But if you are blaming everyone, you make me feel like this, she didn't answer, so I did this. She acted like this, so I acted like this. That's not coming from a place of power. That's coming from a place of the wounded masculine again, Mm -hmm. because I'm reacting to the situations every single time with no control, Mm -hmm. right? So we must take responsibility you know, for everything that's happening for us, because we are also playing a part in it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Responsibility, being able to respond to a situation. Yeah. And if you're not able to respond to a situation, then literally you're blaming. Mm. Love that. Yeah. And then um, how about logical? So what do you think that side means? Like logical, I think, is really important in focus. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think logical and focus go hand in hand a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. focus for me is a huge thing because... In a world full of like distractions today, like we've got our phones, we're constantly scrolling on Instagram, we're constantly looking at Netflix. There's there's so many things that are popping up. Mm. How do we focus? You know, and a man that is focused, I don't know. For me, that's sexy, mm-hmm. right? When when you can focus and, and not get distracted by the little shiny objects mm-hmm. and just stay true to where you're going, like that's a man on a mission. A man yes. on a mission with purpose and focus, like. He doesn't get distracted by like the little nitty gritty conversations on the side. Mm-hmm. He knows what he wants and he goes for it and he follows through. Right? Yeah. And this is the thing we have to protect focus because focus is getting more and more scarce these days. Nobody mm-hmm. listens. Nobody's present in conversations. We're always like checking our phone every five seconds. Mm-hmm. Even when you go on a date with a woman, it's like, uh, how present are you with this woman? How connected are you? Are you mm-hmm. are you asking questions? Are you are you actually listening? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying listening to respond, but I'm saying listening to be present and hear this person out fully. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I think it's, a, it's such a major skill that if more men and women yep. practiced it, yep. then we would have deeper relationships. We feel more connected. We feel seen, heard, and understood. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's what all of us want to feel and i think really in regards to being logical what would you say like logical would be it'd be more of more of um outweighing right like outweighing what are the pros and what are the cons about a situation thinking things through talking the not only talking them through but just really i I think of logical it means to me when i and for a woman is like i find it very intriguing when a man can be very logical in a sense where he outweighs the pros and the cons yeah and takes that initiative to do so you look at women and men like and because a woman can do that too they can just like a lot of women more so are in the feelings or in the in the Mm -hmm. the nature the nature the being yeah the the man is known to be the logical structure the Mm doing so when we think about logical with a man we're thinking about like structure it's like a man hears a problem and he goes, okay, these are all the problems. And he goes straight in, like a partner will complain or say something. He's already going into fixing mode. Mm-hmm. What's this? What's this? What's this? Oh yeah, just do that and that's that. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't have the, he doesn't put the emotion in there. Yeah. And because he's not putting the emotion in there, the emotion is energy in motion. He's not allowing other things to affect the decision. He's mm-hmm. just taking the facts of it. And that's why it's so simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they're like, what, that's why women are like, I just want to talk to you. Why are you just trying to fix everything? Right. Yeah. So that can happen too. So it's kind of like understanding and outweighing that. And this is where this is going to come in too, is support, right? Mm-hmm. Support is huge. A lot of men think that this is a feminine trait, but support is actually not only, I mean, there you can live and su- support can also go hand in hand with nurturing. Yeah. Um, but support is also a big part of the masculine, which a lot of, that's a key piece that a lot of men are being misunderstood with. And support is very important when it comes to 
um, um, bettering relationships overall with people, bettering relationship with yourself, bettering your relationship with your partner, um, and building trust with your partner and also being intentional and connected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what does that look like? Support mm-hmm. looks like your partner's having a bad day. She, maybe she's got a period five days out and, you know, her menstrual cycle is throwing her all over the place. <laughs> she's having different moods and swinging and support would look like this. Would Instead be- of being like, I'm going to not see her for five days. Yeah, support, <laughs> support would be like, baby, I know you're going through this. If you need anything, you let me know. Yeah. I'm going to hold, you're holding space. You're not judging her for it. You're not trying to solve her issues. You're not trying to solve her. You're just allowing her to just go through her process of, what's going to happen most times and just being there without judging, right? Because this is the thing. When we're not supporting and we're judging and we're pointing and we're criticizing, she doesn't feel safe. Mm. And ultimately, we want to make them feel safe. We want to make sure that they can express themselves. And it doesn't sound too crazy because sometimes it might feel like that. Yeah. And how do we make them feel loved and seen in a way where it's like, hey, it's okay. Just do your thing and I'm going to be supporting. I'm going to be right here. I'm going to be your rock. Mm-hmm. All right, which moves into the next thing, which is stability. stability. Mm-hmm. And this goes hand in hand. It's just not your job, men. Like it's not just your job to do this. Women naturally can do this too. In other essence, which we'll do a video about that healthy feminine and the wounded feminine as well. But this goes into stability. That's a huge one with what you're saying is stability, and also too, um, I think in stability. It's something, one of the main things many women look for when they want to create a family with a man, when they want to be married with a man. So we can think about financial stability, which is huge in the men community, right? And talked about is financial stability. And I want to kind of go into what that might be look like to look like to you guys and what that might have meaning to in regards to you guys, but it could be financial stability, but also to emotional stability, being able to regulate your emotions, being able to separate yourself outside of the box instead of reacting at times because of your own trigger or wound that might be showing up. That's why we need a certain side of certain part of emotional intelligence. And that's what Mia does. And so great at, um, and I think stability comes when you are really aware. Yeah. Emotional maturity is such an overlooked conversation, such an right? Overlooked and, conversation. you know, when you think about emotional maturity, you think about like, what, when are the times that you react and over nothing? Mm-hmm. And then later on, you're like, why did I react like that? Or how come I showed up like that? And I have regret all of a sudden yeah right and that's what that is being stable in your own emotions how to regulate your emotions and what that means is how do you accept and be with your emotions and calm yourself down instead of reacting straight away to something that she said or she did Mm. right in that way and go let me process this this is what i do personally right I'm, i'm a processor so i need to like if something triggers me i need to step back and just processing and ask myself, what, what about that situation triggered me, right? Mm-hmm. And then I will have a conversation. Yeah. Right? Because then I'm coming from a place of groundedness yeah. versus a place of you made me feel like this or, you know, mm-hmm. reacting. And reaction is only coming from a wound. Yeah. Right? So we get to check in with our triggers because they're our triggers. But we also get to do it from a place of a grounded space. A grounded space. Yeah. That's the key, grounded space, because also part of a healthy masculine is assertiveness. So let's say for a woman in a relationship, she also needs to show a part of stability within her own self. And I think emotions are huge. This is where like a lot of men go wrong and give the jail free, what's the thing, the jail out a free card or something like this yeah. to women when it comes to emotions, because it's like damsel in distress works, Cinderella works. Um, what's the other one? Rapunzel works, sleeping beauty works, man kisses her. Right. Mm-hmm. And she wakes up. So it's like, we've always been so chemicalized. I love to call it on TV with literally how a man needs to be, but we've never given, I don't think we're really talking about how important it is for a woman to be a stable in her emotions too. Mm-hmm. And so this is where assertiveness comes in for the healthy masculine, because let's say you're in a relationship with a woman and she's not communicating. She's not great with her emotions. She's not handling what money men do is they play the sleeping beauty act or they do the Cinderella act. When in general, what we have to do is come from a place of groundedness and say, you step away, you observe you're in integrity but you need to be assertive and you need to be focused. And this is where the logical part and the responsibility part comes is like, I'm not responsible for what you're witnessing right now. So I need you, or I would encourage you to seek why you're attacking me 
quote unquote, like this in whatever situation yeah. it is and give it back to that partner partner to see so you can see if they can encourage themselves to show up emotionally because a lot of times what we do is we try to do it for them and then the same cycle continues. Yeah, as men, we are fixes. Mm-hmm. So we're like, let me just fix this or oh, she's just doing the same thing and dismiss it. Yep. But, you know, assertiveness is, it's one of my favorite values, yeah. right? Assertiveness means your values matter. Mm-hmm. So do mine. And it's attractive. Yeah, mm-hmm. so do mine, but I'm not going to sacrifice my values for yours. Yeah. And that means me sticking to my values no matter what. And sometimes that can be really hard for men because we just want to fix whatever's happening. And at the same time, what we do is we sacrifice our own values mm-hmm. and then we build resentment. Yeah. And you don't want to do that because you're going to build a whole case of resentment and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you're going to like burst one day and she's going to be like, where did this come from? So we need to be able to be assertive and it doesn't have to come from an aggressive place. Mm-hmm. It can come from just speaking up when you feel you're getting triggered or certain things are happening, right? Which means your boundaries are getting pushed. Mm. And that goes into a couple of other ones is the boundaries, clarity, and we have protection, courage, and discipline, mm-hmm. right? So I think all of these go hand in hand with what we're talking about. But I really want to go into, because I know a lot, men know, I think a lot about what direction means. Like you have a goals goals direction is you're doing energy but when it comes to protection mm-hmm. what do you think that in the healthy masculine looks like well i think about protection as i want to protect my partner mm-hmm. i want her to make sure that she feels safe around me mm-hmm. but it's also it's it's leading mm-hmm. in a way where it's like am i leading am i making sure that like i'm checking the house before we go to sleep you know yes you know it's it's little things it's like that when we're walking on the street maybe you walk on the inside you, mm-hmm. walk, you put her on the inside and you walk closest to the street mm-hmm. it's things like that it's the, the little gestures that make her feel safe and feel protected in the relationship so important i'm so literally the two things you said is the one the first thing with the street my husband always does that you do that yeah. too i've noticed that even in your friendships men this is really important when you're friends with women um, and I think it, cause it's just, you don't do it just because it's for a certain someone you do it because you embody it. That's mm-hmm. the difference. And, um, I remember my husband, I have this thing about keeping the door locked all the time. And I remember the, for the past two nights, one night, like it was just open. I was like, no, we're not doing this anymore. And I was like, I need you as the man of the house. Like I need you to make sure that I'm safe too. Mm-hmm. And part of that is by doing those little things. And ever since I had that conversation with him, that door has always been closed every night before yeah. he goes to bed. Right. So it's like those little things is what women look for. And if it's not done, we're like, why aren't you doing this? Because you're supposed to be protecting me. Mm. Right. Because then that offers the opportunity for me to feel comfortable again in my in my masculine. I mean, in my feminine, excuse me. But the thing about this is that's where the stability part comes into and the emotions like you require or we should always require a woman to be stable in her emotions, because instead of blaming him for locking the door, I told him what I needed from him in order for me to feel comfortable in my feminine so I can continue to show up. And that was the difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huge difference. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing um, is certain and just capable, right? We put down certain capable I don't know if you wanted to go over courage, discipline, and boundaries, but we also know what boundaries are, but it's also a huge topic, right? Yeah. Yeah. So boundaries are something that I think a lot of men too lack because they're scared of um, confrontation. They're scared of um, expressing their needs, yeah. right? And also, if I if I say this, will she believe me? Or will I be an asshole? Yeah. So most of us don't... Boundaries is so overlooked. Or controlling, excuse me. Uh Boundaries is so overlooked. And you think about boundaries. Boundaries equal self-care. And if you don't have great boundaries with yourself first, like I said, we practice everything with ourselves first. Mm -hmm. If you don't have great boundaries with yourself, then you're not going to have great boundaries with with your partner. Your partner's going to walk all over you. And they're going to be like, oh, let me just do this. And you're like, oh, I really don't like that. But then, you know, maybe she persists. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not, and let me clarify, yeah. sorry, I don't interrupt you because it's not because we want to and mm-hmm. because that partner is a bad person. Yeah. Because a lot of people will be like, well, why can't just someone, someone love me for me? Mm-hmm. But realistically, if you look at human behaviors, and that's where we go wrong in relationships, is we everything goes out the window when it comes to love and relationships yeah. sometimes. But if you look at <laughs> human, be, be, human behaviors, like we have boundaries everywhere. When we go out and we get in our car and we reverse and we go outside of the neighborhood, there's a stop sign, yeah. right? There's rules all around us. As humans, we need rules. And part of rules is... For self-care. Yeah. And you think about it like this. Like, you fall in love, you find a girl, you're like, I want a girl that doesn't do 
drugs, she doesn't party, she does this, she's healthy, she's this, she's that. And then you meet a girl and you're like, oh my God, she's so sexy. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm so attracted to her. And all of a sudden you're so in love that you could get half of these boundaries. And there's these traits where she's like, yeah, I like to party or I like to do this. And you just like dismiss it because maybe you're having crazy sex. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're so attracted to her that you're like, I just want this to work. You get mm -hmm. this feeling. So this is where we have to really be grounded as men and really understand it's like, what do I want in a partner? And long term versus short term, mm -hmm. right? Is this going to be the person that is going to be right for me in the long term? Is this going to be a person that actually has the same values, mm -hmm. right? The same vision? Because ultimately, like, that's what happens when you are in partnership. Mm -hmm. Is this a partner for me? Mm -hmm. Right? I love that. Yeah. That's so important. I'm glad you mentioned that. So I also want you guys to know that we'll do a video about the wounded feminine and um, the healthy feminine, because I think that's really important for men to really look at and really see. And if you like this video, I would really encourage you to comment below. Um, if this is your first time visiting, please feel free to subscribe and click that subscribe button. If you wanted to take a step farther, there's two things that you can do here is you can go to Emil's channel. He talks all about emotional intelligence. He's actually a coach for emotional intelligence and he teaches this for people and also entrepreneurs as well. And he really specializes in this. And that's why I'm so happy that he was here to talk to about the wounded masculine, healthy masculine as a man himself. Um, so I think that that's important. And also too, um, I want you to let check out the link because Emil and I, um, and a lot of my partner coaches that I team up with, we do an experiential, experiential retreat for you men. So you can be in person and really be able to embody what we're talking about. And we work with you one-on-one. -on -one. It's completely different than finding it on a YouTube and taking notes or a program or anything like this. It is called a transformational experience. And it's a four day event where me, Meal, um, Donato, a lot of the coaches that I work with and different acts of uh, air services of what they specialize in will come to you and actually work with you in this retreat itself. So you'll be with like-minded men, brotherhoods, former brotherhood. It's an experience that you will never forget in your life. My love past membership this year, these guys travel together now, they stay in touch, you know, and one of the biggest things that I remember in regards to that retreat experience is one of the men said, you know, I went back home with my guy friends, my best friend. And then I went and I visited Curtis, the guy that, um, well, I was in the retreat with, let's say, and it was just a whole difference. I was enlightened because now we can have deeper level conversations. And I was dating this girl and the guys would just shrug it off and be like, oh, whatever, just have sex with her and be done with it. But when I had a deeper conversation with my new guy friend from the retreat, he was like, why are you attracted to her? And he challenged me. And this is what I need in my life. And so it's just created such a great atmosphere. And so these retreats are next level. First of all, you're going to have an amazing experience and we want you to be able to see it. So I'll put the link below where you can get some opportunity to see some clips of previous retreats as well. There is a wait list. So go ahead and apply and see if you are hand selected for that. You will know. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome, Emil. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, guys. Well, those links will be below in the description box. And as always, there will be a next video in the Watch Next playlist if you want to continue watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. And remember, you are always loved. Bye for now.